Welcome to the Women in Leadership, Body, Mind, Soul, and Business podcast. I'm Charlie. And I'm Heather. Together, we are working to connect women in leadership and business to build relationship, empowering each other, improving the health and wellness of our community, body, mind, and soul, sharing the heart and soul of who we are and what we do. Today's guest has a big heart for people and loves to support businesses by supporting its people first. She is a co-author of a book on child loss, infertility, and grief, and speaks straight from the heart. I can't wait to hear what is on her heart today. Please welcome back to the table, the amazing Samantha Brinkley. Thank you, ladies. It's good to be here today. And we also have Amanda with us. Uh, to join us, you know, Amanda Holler, our wonderful blogger friend. So she's going to join us in the discussions today as well. Um, so we, we are super excited. So um, Samantha, so if someone's just listening for the first time, could you do just a quick introduction? Um, and then we'll get into um, the heat, heart and heat of what we're here for today. <laughs> Sure. I'm the owner of Rocket City HR Consulting. It is an HR consultancy where we have HR business professionals that help organizations be stronger and we support them by helping them with strategy and implementation of initiatives to help their people be successful. So we really believe that a successful organization is based on satisfied employees. So we help with all everything regarding the full employee life cycle, everything from recruiting to development mm -hmm. to um, recognition, training, and even succession planning. And sometimes it's getting people out of the organization. So we kind of, you know, have our hands on every part of that, that aspect with regard to employees. That's really awesome. Yeah. And I love that you work with small businesses to help support them. Uh, because they don't necessarily have the resources to have their own uh, HR support staff. So it's really awesome. And you help people all over the country. So you don't have to be located where you are. You don't have to be located where we are. You're, you're, you're here to help everyone. And it's really amazing. Mm -hmm. And part of your passions mm -hmm. is helping women in business specifically. And you're part of some organizations. Mm -hmm. You want to go ahead and tell us some of the cool things you've been doing? I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> Trying yeah. to like um, not give anything away. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I am currently the president of the Women's Economic Development Council of North Alabama, and I'm also a member of the Women's Business Council, which is a subgroup of the Huntsville and Madison County Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. and both organizations are seeking to empower women in business and leadership. So we, we have mentoring programs, we help women establish their businesses, we network, and we do training, mm -hmm. and we development meetings monthly. So it's just a great, great, um, both of them are great organizations and they, they support each other and there's a lot of overlap with the members. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, we actually were invited um, uh, to go to an, um, an event called Women Who Shape the State. And they were celebrating women throughout the state of Alabama. There were some that were mothers. There were some, a lot of them were probably mothers, but there were some that were recognized for, for doing um, great activities involving their children, their families. We had doctors, we had business owners, business leaders, which is a whole variety of women doing all kinds of amazing things that were recognized. So we had a contingent, we had eight people um, that, that drove down to Birmingham representing both of our organizations. And we just had a great time and are really looking forward to more opportunities to recognize women. And so this month, if, if you all don't know, is, is really we're celebrating women in leadership and women in business. So that, that's kind of what's going on. And we're just really excited to share some of that positivity and some of those great lessons learned and really trying to hug each other and support each other as we're on these journeys. Absolutely. And um, there's some really interesting things going on in the world of business because women are becoming such a huge part of the business. Um, and so the how corporate mindset used to work doesn't work anymore. And so things are changing. And I know Samantha's got some um, things that she's noticed on, on her heart that has changed or, or feels needs to be changed. 
Yeah, I will say I, I've heard it asked a lot. You know, why do we have this women's group, and you know, why do we have a men's group? Well, we don't have a men's group because men have been doing all of this forever, and they've always had the Good Old Boys Network. And if we're looking at women, and I look at and within the WEDC, and a couple of years ago, we at our annual meeting in October, we do recognition and we talk about how far we've come and how our organization, the WEDC was started back in the eighties. And it was started to help women get on boards because we had one fearless female leader who was out there going, there's nobody, there's no other women on boards and nobody's asking them to be on boards. And so that was kind of her singular mission. So she started the organization and it has grown since then. And we now have about 170 members locally. And a couple of years ago, when they did that meeting, we had, I mean, it was at least 50 to 75 people that were serving on various boards and some of the multiple boards. Mm -hmm. But the thing that we were talking about yesterday is that most of the boards that they're on, they're the nonprofit boards and mm -hmm. they're not getting paid. But there are a number of state appointed boards that are out there and there might be two women on it and, you know, 50 men. And so we're really trying to figure out, and that's one of the goals with the Women's Business Center, we're going to be meeting separately to talk about how do we break into that? How do we get into that? How do we make sure that we're not being left out, that we're able to be on these boards and be a part of these decision making? Because women are, you know, we're 50% of the population roughly, and we are in business, we're everywhere. And the, the boards at the corporate level and at the state level and the appointed level are not representative of women still. So it just kind of dawned on me that this organization is still needed because even though we've come so far, we still have so far to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, one of the questions that came up for me while you were talking was, why is it uh, like if somebody's on the fence about whether or not they should go for it, be part of a board, you know, um, and just really embracing the community in a different way like that. Um, if they're on the fence about it, why should they just like go for it? Like I think it's because of, the, well, a couple of reasons. First off, the networking they're going to get to do, and they're going to get to be a part of making decisions. Mm -hmm. And once you're on one board, then you're more likely to be asked for another board. So you're, you might not get asked to be on a board where you have to be appointed or on a paid corporate board if you haven't been on another board already. So part of it is just getting that board experience and, and how to interface with a group of executive board level people and, and understanding how boards run. And there's certain rules around governance of boards mm -hmm. of directors. And so it's important to kind of understand that. So if you, you know, even if looking at a board appoint a board, even if it's a nonprofit, you know, free board, and you're basically volunteering your time, it can mm -hmm. be a stepping stone into a larger board or a paid board down the road. Mm -hmm. So you kind of got to build the portfolio or the resume. Mm -hmm. So you have to build the skills to get there. So yeah, so it's like maybe stepping your way through those skills, and in the meantime, you're networking. So the likelihood of you being able to step up to the next better position in, at work, um, you know, through your networking, or maybe even find a different job that's, you know, suits you better. It, it, it creates more and more opportunities by being part of a board. Exactly. So we were talking to one of our members who is on a board and we asked how she got on it. She says, I have no idea. You know, she's like, my husband, he knew so-and-so that maybe knows so-and-so, or maybe because I did this or I did that, but she really didn't even know. But I mean, if you're sitting at home and you're not doing things, your name won't pop up anywhere. So you have to be active and involved and getting to know people. And, and, you know, you may not know who's referring you to that, but if you're doing great things, people will see it. Yes. I like that quote. If you're doing great things, people will see it. I'm going to write now, that down. People don't always speak up. And Amanda talks a lot about this. Like, you know, when we see people doing great things, Amanda, do you want to say something on that? Like, <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, um, it was kind of one of the, the topics a few episodes back where if it's some, there's something, I think it was a motivational Monday last Monday, actually, or this Monday. Um, if you if there's something on your heart to share that because you never know how that's going to impact somebody's business or their or their day even you know I um, ran a small 
Um, I don't even know that you could say business because I never made a single dime for like eight years. <laughs> but for all intents and purposes, for my heart, it was a business um, of promoting small businesses in the area. And it wasn't until I announced that I was no longer doing that, that all of a sudden people in the woodwork came out saying, oh my God, I loved it when you did your YouTube videos or I loved your lives and I loved this, but I never heard from them the whole time I was doing it. So I didn't see the value. And I'm someone who has a passion for helping others. So the fact that I didn't see that value meant that it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do, which meant it wasn't filling my value either. So I stopped doing it and I moved on to something else, you know, uh -huh. which isn't necessarily bad, but sometimes too, I think in the back of my mind, what would have happened had I stuck with it? And that was only like six months ago I did that. <laughs> so, yeah, well, you know, and you're still really doing the same thing, but on yeah. a different format. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, I believe that Samantha has a reading for us. Would now would be a good time? Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, a new book out that she wants to talk about. Yes, this book, I think it came out last April. It's called It's Not About the Gun. It's written by Kathy Stearman. She was our guest speaker at our WEDC luncheon last month. And she was a phenomenal badass, I'm just going to say. We all loved her. She, she read an excerpt from her book, talked a little bit about what she did. She actually was a female FBI agent, and she is retired now. But, and she's about to move to Portugal. But we heard about her, we, we heard about her book and we heard about her story and we thought that, you know, she'd be a good person to talk to. Um, the FBI uh, is coming, it's, they're here, but they have a huge contingent that's coming to the Huntsville area. And we thought, well, let's bring her out and hear from her. And she was phenomenal. And some of the stories that she had, they just kind of, you know, they got to me and we'll kind of talk about that after the fact. But this is an excerpt from when she got to meet director Robert Mueller. Mm -hmm. And he was, they were sitting in an armored vehicle on the way for him to return back to the airplane to go back to the United States. He looked at her and he said, may I ask you a question? Crap. I hope this isn't about the wheels up party, which they would have once he left and they had a successful visit. She said, I was more shocked than surprised. Director Mueller did not engage in small talk nor had he ever asked me a personal question. You're the director of the FBI. I'm gonna say no, hoping I didn't sound as wary as I felt. I said, of course, you've been league at in multiple countries dominated by men, some predominantly Muslim. Did you ever feel you couldn't do your job because you're a woman? That's now, I was truly stunned. Silently, I continued to stare at him. His gaze, as usual, never wavered. Should I tell him the truth? If I do, will he think I'm complaining? I wanted to make sure I did nothing wrong, said nothing wrong. This man was my boss, the head of the entire FBI. He could remove me from my position with just a few words. I opted for the truth. Director Mueller, in all the countries I've covered, I have been treated like a queen. Mm -hmm. I have been respected and given everything I've asked for, if it was in their power to give it to me. But I will tell you that I have been discriminated against and harassed and treated far worse by my own male agent colleagues than I ever was by anyone overseas. Then I hesitated and added softly. And with all due respect, sir, you needed to know that. He studied me silently, looked away, then turned his laser focus back toward me. You're right, I suppose I did. That's powerful, huh? So powerful. I love so that powerful. she took a moment to speak the truth. Like you were given an opportunity and she didn't waste it. Right. I have goosebumps. Like mm -hmm. the courage wow. that it took to say that because all those things she said that were going through her mind, she could get fired. She could just be another woman complaining. Mm -hmm. Would he believe her? Would he take her seriously? But, but she actually, she said, I'm just going to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, being a Navy veteran myself, um, 
I totally see where she's coming from. I completely see that because I've worked with people from overseas and I've worked with, um, you know, people lots. Okay. The Navy's like 90% dudes. Okay. So, um, (laughs) 90% of the dudes for four years. Right. (laughs) And my, my rate, I was the boss of mate. If you know anything about the Navy, the boss of mate is like the most like masculine rate. It's like the infantry of the Navy, right? The grunts. Um, and it, the, I don't know, they just don't really treat women very well. They just don't. And it's really sad that they don't, you know, and, you know, you get uh, blamed for, for things. They don't believe you when you speak up or, you know, it's, it's not important, you know, the voice is not valid. Right. Right. So speaking up in a moment where your voice can be valid, a lot of courage. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I recommend definitely reading this book and any book by a female FBI agent because there, there's another female FBI agent author that I read and follow and they just have so much advice for how you present yourself to the world so that you have that power mm-hmm. in the moment like you have the presence mm-hmm. and nobody can take that from you mm-hmm. the other thing that she shared it and when I re- when I read the book There are parts of of the book where sometimes there's very few opportunities for women moving up in in the FBI, especially when she started. I mean, you know, I mean, she started in the 70s. So this is, you know, this this was not today's generation. This was a while back. Mm -hmm. So and things have come a long ways, but there were fewer opportunities for women at that time. And so there was a feeling that, you know, sometimes the women would just be competing against each other for that one or two you know, small positions. So instead of the women supporting each other, you know, they would be tearing each other down and trying to claw their way to the top to get to that high position. And I'm sure things like that happen everywhere in every organization, especially when those positions were so coveted and so few. So the idea is we need to get more positions for women so that 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 isn't the case. But I will say that she also mentioned some male colleagues that helped her. Um, She actually talked about when she was um, when she was on the firing line and the instructor there was trying to basically didn't want her to to succeed. And he had messed up her 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 um, lines of sight on her on her on her weapon. And so when she went to shoot the first one, it was it was off like crazy. But she had shot enough back home. I think she was from a farm in Ohio. So she knew. So she made the corrections and she, you know, she aced it. And he was just floored. But so they had to pass her. But, but you know, he was trying to prevent her from getting in at that time. But that was a time when it really wasn't common for women to go into, um, into that, that, that field. So, so it is, it's just to say that there are going to be men on your side. Mm-hmm. There's going to be women on your side. Mm-hmm. But really, you know, if, if there are women that are serving with you in any capacity, in any board, in any position, do your best to help them. And, and you guys can succeed together instead of mm-hmm. trying to tear each other down. And so that right. was just kind of eye-opening too that, that it, but it makes sense. I mean, you know, if, if you're in this male dominated, you know, organization and you are trying to be successful, you know, you're probably going to be a little tougher than you would be otherwise. And you're going to want to make sure you get the success but we need to not do it at the expense of other women. Exactly, exactly. It's another opportunity to um, step into abundance Mm -hmm. and away from lack and to step into female energy into the role. Like um, just because the, the dominance of the organizations have male masculine energy doesn't mean that the female energy still isn't needed. Amanda? Yeah, I was just, you know, um, I've been in situations where, and I've actually had this conversation with my husband frequently. There's been so many times mm-hmm. in job roles that I've had where it was male dominated. So my husband and I met at a weld shop. That's a great example. All the welders, the owner, everyone but the bookkeeper and she only came one day a week on payroll right they all loved her because she came with the money honey (laughs) you know but uh it was all male dominated and to be to be 110 percent honest with you 
I enjoyed that job more than I did some of the other jobs where I was with primarily women in, say, a kitchen. And I love to bake and I love to cook and I love the kitchen. Um, if I didn't, I would be about 125 pounds lighter. But the thing was, is the reason I enjoyed working in a male dominated field was because I didn't have, and pardon my language here, but I didn't have the cattiness and the bitchiness that went with working in a prominently all female industry. So it goes kind of both ways. Does that make sense what I'm saying? <laughs> Did we can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. I thought we froze there for a second. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. yeah oh, it, <laughs> it makes sense. And I know Samantha yeah. who works with, you know, in HR um, mm -hmm. and that's her business that she has to, you know, deal with this kind of stuff all the time. <laughs> It right. really depends on the people because our team mm -hmm. is all women and it's, and it's great, mm -hmm. but I do know there's times where there's tension, there's conflict, there's whatever. So I don't know if it, you know, if you just need one bad apple to kind of spoil the, the, the bushel or what, but, um, or, or maybe people feed off of that and maybe, or maybe it's a, it's an aspect of leadership. I don't know, but you know, we're, we don't, we don't really have any drama, <laughs> which is good. Um, but, but I know there are places where that is the case. And I have heard that same complaint a lot mm -hmm. of times too. Yeah, I, yeah I, I've actually worked in both. Like right now we have an all-female team. There's four of us um, and I love it. We all get along great. Um, mm -hmm. And I've also worked in an environment where predominantly women, but they were awful. <laughs> right. You know, and I think it's also the level of communication mm -hmm. and how open the communication is. Like, are we actually communicating about the real problems, which is what we do, mm -hmm. right? We always have space for that. Like, what is the real problem? Well, my real problem is my laundry is not done. Um, I have to make dinner. Um, <laughs> my kid oh. needs me at school, you know, and these things are drawing me away from what I really want to do, which is focus. Right. So, like, so in a, in in a traditional corporate setting i feel like that there wasn't room for that like it didn't matter whatever you had at home you were supposed to leave it at home mm -hmm. and i just think that that's a different way and more masculine way of doing business mm -hmm. and i'm not so good at it like and it makes you angry and upset and it creates this like really awful place and then you're not the person you want to be in the community mm -hmm. right because then you're spreading the cattiness you're being the the b-i-t-c-h you know you're mm -hmm. like, like crap that was not what I wanted to be right and um that that's what's changing about yeah. women working together in We're abundance yeah as opposed to that masculine energy of, you know, cutthroat. Um, and in general, the as a society, we're much more open about our emotions. Mm -hmm. It's not so much, you know, you know, you're not allowed to cry anymore. You know, like we're allowed to have your emotion, but you're also allowed to handle it constructively, you know, mm -hmm. like, and then work, you know, and then we can work through it. And, you know, like we talk a lot about the, the book, the four agreements mm -hmm. in, and remembering that the, how someone is reacting to you has to do with them, not you. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a quick question, Samantha? Sure. Because, because you work nas uh, nationally with your clients, have you noticed, and um, this is something that just came to my mind, have you noticed that there's maybe a certain part that is much more in tune with this vision of, you know, women working together and women being in higher roles and on paid boards and things like that versus other areas of the country? I really haven't, but I don't know, like the WEDC is really just in Alabama. So my getting involved in women's empowerment and women's economic development is more local. So our business, our clients are everywhere, but I don't really delve into okay. that at that level, if that makes sense. But it did have me wondering last night. I mean, I came back from that great event yesterday and I thought, 
well, what's going on in other states? And is there a national group that's trying to promote women? And I know at the state level there, they have a uh, women's um, business foundation and I hadn't even heard of it. And so I'm thinking, you know, there's probably each state has multiple various entities like that, but what about having some kind of a coalition or collaboration with all of these entities? And what about some kind of a national, you know, conference or, you know, organization where all these people are coming together um, for the greater good. So there may be some things like that. I did some preliminary research last night. I really couldn't find anything, but, but there might be something there. Right. And if there isn't something there now, because, you know, we're just getting out of COVID world, right? I, I feel like that we're just starting to breathe again. And, um, you know, there's a lot of other things going on in the world right now, but um, really like finding, it's going to happen, right? Right. So we definitely are moving into that direction. And maybe this having this conversation is part of the catalyst for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so one of the things we talked to Samantha about before uh, we went live today was um, how would people go about finding a organization locally that they want to be a part of that helps with women, you know, like uh, Now Networking, which is our cause of the quarter, like the Women's Economic Development Board in Huntsville, like, you know, other, these other things. And um, if you know of an organization, go ahead and let us know because we're, we're building like a resource book. Um, but also um, you can search your local area um, to find these networking groups, a lot of those networking groups know of these types of organizations, things like that, or also reach out to an organization that you know exists and ask them if they have or know of one more local to you is another way. And Samantha, you were even saying that um, a not local organization might have public materials so you would still have access to information and resources mm -hmm. and maybe it's you know maybe we plant some seeds maybe we you know mm -hmm. we help some people get mm -hmm. some things started in your local areas yeah Huntsville has been a really great community for allowing anybody to start a business and there's all kinds of resources just amazing resources out here mm -hmm. and so we have what's called a women's business center Mm -hmm. And it used to be called the Women's Business Center of North Alabama, which, you know, you got the WEDC and the WBC and the WBCNA. And I mean, it was, it was really confusing. And now we just have the WEDC and the WBC, and we even have a WEDC foundation. So that's confusing enough. But the WBCNA, a couple of years ago, and I was on their board at the time, they decided to rebrand. And they're now called the Catalyst Center for Entrepreneur um, um, Catalyst Center for Business and Entrepreneurship. And they last week was amazing. On Friday, they had a, an award um, luncheon for um, entrepreneurs and, and it, was, it was great and it was amazing. And it, they outgrew the venue. Um, so we're gonna have to pick a bigger place next year, but it was phenomenal. But the reason why I bring that up is there, they, there's, a, there's a national grant out there for women's business centers. Mm -hmm. And so the, the Catalyst, one of their programs now is just the WBC. But there are multiple WBC entities throughout the United States. I would look up Women's Business Center and try to find one near you. And there may only be, you know, they might only be near some of the bigger metropolitan areas, but reach out to the closest one. And then also the Small Business Administration. I think they also have some, um, some information about women's business. There, there's certifications you can get if you're a business um, owner. Um, WeBank, W-B-E-N-C. Especially if you're a contractor, if you want to be a government contractor, they're kind of a self-certifying agency to be a certified woman-owned business. Mm -hmm. So um, there's some of those things out there. But I would say the Small Business Administration and the women looking for a women's business center near you would be the right way to start. But if you can't find anything, then reach out to me and I can plug you into our local WBC and they should at least be able to provide you some resources and, and maybe point you in the right direction. Right. And that's, a, that's actually a question that we have had people reach out to us a lot on is like, I hear you talking about these different organizations. How do I get in contact with one local to me? And so there you go. Um, uh, we've so got exciting. resources. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, 
So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and skip today's meditation because I think that reading we did earlier was very, very thought provoking. And it's basically, you know, the, in, the intent, you guys. So thank you for sharing that, Samantha. My pleasure. I'm going to go ahead and go to our quote this week. Um, Seeds of unhappiness, sources of fear, cause conflict and strife. Roast them with a flame of awareness and clear, clearly hear the inner essence of life. Nikolai Bachman. Mm. I think that's exactly what we're talking about as mm -hmm. we're talking about coming together, giving up the cattiness, mm -hmm. you know, really stepping into abundance mm -hmm. and stepping into there's room for all of us at the table and we can support each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, women used to gather in circles in community. When you think of lions, like a pride of lions, right? Uh, it's usually the males that fight each other and the women that do the hunting and, and uh, uh, they do the, the cooking. The cook and you know, <laughs> right? they, they gather together and, and women would make noise. So that's why we would talk and we would do things because then the noise would keep, you know, the animals from attacking and the mm -hmm. men would be out quiet mm -hmm. so i mean it's like back in the day amanda's way, laughing at way me. back <laughs> so we're building that table we're building that circle again yeah, I, I heard last month at the wedc luncheon um one of our members got up and said you know we are the good girls like you got the good old boys club but we are yeah. the good old girls club yeah, right? and i thought that was amazing so you know it, so if you don't have a club or an organization near you start one you know make your own good old girls club <laughs> so that you can give each other opportunities and we we pass so much business amongst ourselves we we mentor each other we share resources you know we'll say oh my gosh this thing is blowing up on me you know how do i fix it so we are just there for each other mm -hmm. and it's just amazing so if you if you don't have one i definitely encourage you to to find a small group start small and then and grow it and if you want any pointers from you know from me i'll be glad to kind of tell you what things we do we have a uh we have i think we have 10 or 11 different committees one of them is recognition and so we'll find something that somebody did if they got a best in business award or they got appointed to a board or they got a promotion and we will do a little recognition we'll send them a card we'll put it we'll do a press release on it and we'll put them on our web page and so we're making sure that we are tooting our own horns and making sure we're sharing that out with the community so that everybody can hear and see what's being done with, with within our organization and that is so important. I love it. I'm so excited. Amanda. Yes. Did you have something you'd like to say? <laughs> I feel bad. I don't mean to interrupt you guys. There's like a probably a three to four second delay on my end. I don't know if it's happening on anybody else's end. And so I, sorry to talk over the top of you girls. I was just saying um, the lioness theory. I am so using that in my everyday life because ever since I was old enough to talk, I have been told, oh my gosh, we always know when Amanda's here because she's like, well, yeah, I'm trying to keep all the snotties away, okay? <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm, with you. I'm right. with you. My nickname when I was in high school was Magpie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so my mom still calls me Maggie, so it, it's fine. <laughs> How cute. Oh, so cute. I had a friend years ago and her husband, he always knew when it was me on the other end of the phone because it would be like an hour plus long conversation on the phone and he'd go, oh, there's the hens clucking in the hen house again. <laughs> <laughs> So get Start yourself like your it. circle of girls <laughs> together. Make some noise. Ladies. Make get some, some noise. Loud. Get on those boards and um, you know connect with Samantha and all of her resources. She's amazing uh, as a as a businesswoman. She's got a huge heart, and I just love her. Thank you, Samantha, for joining us today. We're so blessed to have you. Thank you so much for listening and connecting with us today. We're looking forward to continuing to build more relationships with more community leaders. Don't forget to catch us live on Mondays at 1130 Pacific and Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Pacific and Wednesdays and Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, we're
yeah, we're doing some really exciting things and we can't wait for you guys to check it out. So thank you for joining us today. Namaste. Namaste.